power of your love. Let your love surround me. Good evening and welcome to Thursday's evening prayers for this, the 16th of June. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. The hands of the Lord work faithfulness and justice. All the commandments of the Lord are sure. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. This evening's psalm is selected verses from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this evening is taken from the book of Numbers, reading from chapter 12, verses 1 to 16. While they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had indeed married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone else on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. So the three of them came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. And he said, hear my words. When there are prophets among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. Not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted with all my house. With him I speak face to face clearly, not in riddles. And he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then? Were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. When the cloud went away from over the tent, Miriam had become leprous, as white as snow, and Aaron turned towards Miriam and saw that she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O oh my Lord, do not punish us for a sin that we have so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like one stillborn, whose flesh is half consumed when it comes out of its mother's womb. And Moses cried to the Lord, O oh God, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not bear her shame for seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp for seven days, and after that she may be brought in again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people did not set out on the march until Miriam had been brought in again. After that, 
the people set out from Hazaroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our New Testament reading this evening is from the book of Matthew, 18, reading from verses 10 to 20. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it, more over than the ninety-nine that have never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you ever think to yourself, God is having a bit of a laugh? I don't really look for signs, but sometimes things happen that stare you in the face. And you know it's not a coincidence, but it's a God incidence. And tonight's gospel reading for me sums that up. So, at the Ark where I work most days, I use one of these. A stapler and it's great for joining things together like the children's work or reports or pieces of paper that need joining and have you ever gone to get something like a stapler and it stops working I have and no matter how many times I try and join the paper together it just won't work and I get exasperated and I say to my colleague Helen or to Kate or to Kaz will you try because I'm getting really frustrated and they will take the stapler in fact this happened very recently Helen took the stapler and she opened it and she realized that right in there a staple was stuck she bashed it to get it out and voila, the stapler worked again. Well, this reminded me of Jesus and what he wants us to do with our relationships. Jesus values all people and he knows that we need to value the relationships that we have with one another. It says in verse 15 of the gospel reading that we had tonight. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. In other words, talk to each other if you have a problem. In verse 16, but if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. In other words, if talking doesn't help, Take a couple of people to help by listening 
and facilitating a conversation that might resolve the issue. Verse 17, if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. So, if this doesn't work, Jesus tells us to go to the church, to our minister or to an elder. Jesus wants us to work hard to keep our relationships, to resolve conflict. Sometimes the issues can be the little things that are stuck in our head or in our heart. With help and support and through prayer, we can resolve issues and take care of those relationships. God wants us to take care of our relationships because they are what bind us together and keep us together and hold us together, just like the stapler. I'd like to share a poem with you, which is written by Helena Steiner Rice. If we put our problems in God's hand, there is nothing we need understand. It is enough just believe that what we need, we will receive. Life is a mixture of sunshine and rain, teardrops and laughter, pleasure and pain. We can't have all bright days, but it's certainly true that there was never a cloud the sun didn't shine through. The more you love, the more you'll find that life is good and friends are kind. For only what we give away enriches us from day to day. Often we stand at life's crossroads and view what we think is the end. But God has a much bigger vision and he tells us it's only a bend. Everything is by comparison, both the bitter and the sweet. And it takes a bit of both of them to make our lives complete. Oh, make us more aware, dear God, of little daily graces that come to us with sweet surprise from never dreamed of places. You can't pluck a rose or fragrant with dew without part of the fragrance remaining on you. God never sends the winter without the joy of spring. And though today your heart may cry, tomorrow it will sing. Amen. A beautiful worship song now to share with you. Let there be love shared among us.
beautiful words. Let us pray. Living God, in you there is no darkness. Shed upon us through this night the light of your forgiveness, your healing and your peace, that when we wake from sleep, we may know once more the brightness of your presence through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, which is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. In the beginning you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. To dispel the darkness of our night, you sent forth your Son, the firstborn of all creation. He is our light, our light of the world. And we acclaim as all creation sings to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And now we come to our cycle of prayer for this Thursday evening. And we pray especially this evening for the ministers, elders and members in our churches in Northamptonshire. We continue to pray this evening for all those who continue to face the challenge of COVID-19. I read today in the news that we may be looking at another wave. And it's a huge worry. People are getting back to normal, but we know that there is a new normal now. And so we pray for all of those who are still facing this huge challenge. Key workers, NHS and care home staff, teachers and school staff, those continuing to administer vaccinations and those who have COVID and who are struggling with COVID. We pray also for all those with ailments of any kind, including people who are living with chronic pain and other long term conditions. And we pray alongside all of those who suffer physically and all those whose mental health has been badly affected by the challenges they face. And tonight we pray for those who have heavy burdens to carry on their own. For those who may have complex family situations, that there may be open dialogue and understanding. And we pray also for those who may be in some kind of conflict with someone else. We pray that God will make a way for them to heal and resolve. We pray for all those currently facing rising costs in food, housing, heat and so many other essentials. And we pray with great thanks for food banks and other services that are helping families who are really struggling at this time. And we pray for all those caught up in conflict, whether forced to flee, to fight or suffering the loss of loved ones. We pray for those afflicted by the conflict in the Ukraine. And we pray also for those who are coming across in boats to get to a safe place and then who may be facing a plane taking them to another country that may not have been part of their plan. But we pray that these people will be safe and will remain safe. And now we come to our praying community, people that we pray for each night. We pray this evening with Liz, for her great nephew, Ryan, and for her daughter, Emma, as she looks after Leon, 
her five-year-old son. We pray with Celia for her brother-in-law Mike, struggling with pain and awaiting possible surgery. We pray with Prince for Cheryl and with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. We pray with Judith for Catherine, her niece. We pray for the Reverend Derek Hopkins in his recovery. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. And within our prayer team, we pray for Geoffrey as he continues to recover. We pray this evening for all those who grieve the passing of loved ones. We pray especially for the Reverend David Morris, whose funeral is to be on Saturday. We pray especially for the members of the Community of Grace and Wycliffe United Reformed Church in Leicester. We pray for those grieving for the death of Anne Townsend and especially for the Reverend Jeff Townsend. And we pray for all our partners in the Botswana Synod as they mourn the death of the Reverend Mapoko Stoffert Matsilla. She's known to the East Midland Synod young people who participated in our exchange programme. And we pray for our Botswana sisters and brothers as they face the shock of the loss of Mapoko so soon after the death of Malabogo. And Father God, we pray this evening for those mentioned, but we pray also for those on our hearts, those known to some of us, those unknown to some of us, but all who are in need of your prayers tonight. Let's have a moment of silence as we bring those people. Father God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's join together with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I've chosen a song to close tonight, which I shared with my own prayer chain this evening. It was introduced to me by a really lovely, lovely lady called June. The words are beautiful and it's called God Will Make a Way. And tonight it's sung by the Oslo Gospel Choir. God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see Strength for each new day. 
And we know because we believe that anything is possible with God and he will make a way. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen and good night. <laughs>